that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna make a ukulele. This is the wood we're gonna make a ukulele out of. Or attempt to, this might not work. First, we have a piece of black cherry. It's a very pretty wood, I've worked with it before. This is mahogany. I think this is African mahogany, the red type, not the white type we have here in the United States of Americas. This is planning to be the back of the ukulele. You know, it's gonna cut that whole shape out and thin it down. Well, nice and good there. This is cypress, thick boy cypress. Big old piece. Uh, this is what you're actually supposed to make a ukulele out of the bed. Soundboard. That's the front. We're just gonna cut her down, we're gonna thin her out. It'll be real nice and it'll be real good and pretty. Uh, you know, the soundboard and the back, supposed to be two millimeters thick, just about two millimeters thick. And the whole big old uh, sides there, they're supposed to be 1.5 millimeters thick, which is gonna be real fun and real difficult because I've never steam bent one before. So it's gonna be a journey and it's gonna be an experience and it's gonna be so, so, so much fun and you get to be here. These are those neat little pieces of wood I sewed you a second ago. They were those long skinny ones uh, that I said I was about to bend into the shape of the ukulele sides. And I tried to do that. I tried really hard to do that. But instead of doing that, I made a bunch of really small pieces of wood. Because, you know, that's kind of what happened. You see what was happening. It was, I was bending it and it was going alright. Then it stopped going alright and it snapped. And then I stopped being all right, and I snapped, and I broke all the pieces of wood, and the tiny pieces of wood. So you have a bunch of tiny pieces of wood that I don't know what to do with. But why I know I'm not gonna do with them is make a ukulele, because they're all too small, and they won't work. And I cut out a few more pieces and sanded those down and tried again, and that didn't work. So, the thing is, I'm out of wood. That type of wood, but I'm not out of other types of wood. So I think I'm gonna have to resort to other things to make this the sides of this ukulele out of. And I've been thinking about a few different things to try. I'm going to try this first. This is a pretty old piece of maple. It's maple flooring. It's interconnecting floors. I got it out of the trash bin. It was being used to build the floor of our new gymnasium at the high school. And so I just kind of snatched it out of the dumpster. And so it was a little piece of scrap. It's real pretty wood. And if I thin it down, and then bend it, I think it'll work all right, but if it also decides to be a poopy head and snap and die and not work, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some two by fours and try with those until I can get them to work. The sides would be pine, the wood's not pretty, but then I would probably design and paint the sides and try with all that kind of stuff. But we're gonna see what happens. So, you get to stay with me, and we're basically redesigning the entire thing right now. So, cheers. Jump cut. Originally, right now, I had explained to you what I was planning to do for the rest of the ukulele, but part of that turned out to be wrong, as I later discovered while I was working on it, so I'm just going to cut part of that out, and right now I'm going to tell you about how I'm planning to go about the soundboard in the back of the ukulele. You'll see that right about now. These two thick boys, they're going to be the soundboard and the back of the ukulele. But, if you're like, wow, those are pretty thick pieces of ukulele right there, you'd be absolutely right. They have to be very thinned down, and I was sitting here racking my brain about how I would do such a thing as um, I had the planer that I usually use for stuff at the school is out of commission currently. Ours, well, we don't really have, I, like there's a bit of a planer that lives in the corner of the shop. All my life, I've never seen him used. I think it doesn't work, so I can't use that. But actually I did use that because I fixed it. On to me explaining the next thing. I just clamped two two by fours to the table the same width as the board and made them where this hits the blade just the right amount far enough off the blade that cuts off the sliver that I need. 
So hopefully this works really well. You'll see in just a second. Okay, so what we're doing here is bending the sides of the ukulele. I already got this one mostly done, mostly bent to shape. I'm letting this part dry before I bend it anymore just so it doesn't try to revert to the shape it was originally in. But I did that side first just to make sure this glue would work and I wouldn't get a video of me doing absolutely nothing in the breaking like I did last time. So what you gotta do is right here I have my heat gun set up on this metal pipe which is getting very hot. Shouldn't have touched that. And that's gonna apply the heat source that helps us bend the wood. And the pipe just helps us give us a shape to bend it around. I have this die cut out, and this is the shape that I want the ukulele to be in when I'm done. I'll have two halves, and I glue them together with blocks at both ends. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna spray this piece of wood, which I just cut out with water, and then you're gonna press it on here, and that applies heat and steams it out, and you can bend the piece of wood only where you're applying the heat at. This pipe does take a while to get hot. You can heat it up a little bit faster with the torch. But you don't want it to get way too hot because it will burn the wood if it's too hot. Just seeing if it's as warm as I want it to be. And the first bend I usually do, or I did last time and I've done for the other pieces, is this one in the middle because it's the most aggressive bend. And therefore, if I can get that one down, a piece of wood should work and get the rest of them down. That's how I've been going about this and it's been working all right so far. That's what we're going to do. Oh, excuse me. So I, I kind of eyeball it out and leave a little bit at the end and run this piece down the side of the ukulele frame and see about where I want to try to start this bend. I want this side is the outside, so for this bend I'll have to be bending that in. So I'll heat that up. Oh, I'm not heat it up yet. Put the water right where I want that bend to be, and I'll press it onto here. Let that heat up. The grain of the wood does make it bend differently in different spots. So sometimes you can really feel it just giving in and bending really easily. And sometimes it's a little bit harder. And the, nice, the best way to do it here, or the way, reason I'm doing it like this and not with clamps and steam, is because I can feel when I think the wood's about to crack, think it's trying to give out, and I just kind of let off for a second. And try to bend it somewhere else. If you do get a small crack, what I recommend doing is just getting some wood glue. You just get some wood glue and you kind of rub it in there with your finger finger and let it dry for a day and then you can sand that off at the end. And as long as it doesn't crack more, it shouldn't affect the sound of the ukulele at all. And if you sand it right and you don't let the crack get big, then you won't be able to see it very much. There is hot air coming out of the top of this, so if I need some more heat, I can just hold it over there. So that's the first bend. It doesn't look very well. And it definitely doesn't fit the shape at all, but you have to do that same thing quite a few times to get this to really have an effect. And like I said, if you feel like it's about to break, definitely don't keep pushing because it's very thin wood. On average, about 1.5 millimeters. Little, some parts are thicker, some parts are thinner, you know. I'm not perfect, neither is the wood. Neither is anything I make. But you know, neither is life, so. As you can tell, it's definitely getting a much more aggressive bend now. Still not to that shape yet. So, the next part of the bend. And every time you hold it down there, see? where your, so your ends will be lining up so you can see which side you want to bend it more on so you don't get one end that's too short and one that's too long. You can cut the long part off of the end. I tried to cut both of these so there will be plenty to cut off at the ends so I have a little bit of wiggle room to play with. But still you want it to be pretty even on both sides just to be safe. And I did not uh, sand or polish the sides uh, that are going to be the exterior yet. 
because when you spray the water on the grain will pop back out and it'll make it kind of look a little ugly you know, not super pretty pretty so you just gotta wait a second and let that cool down before you try again or it will just kind of pop back to its original shape I would recommend using gloves as well. I've touched this a few times and have gotten burnt. So, I just don't really wear gloves that often because I'm not a super smart person sometimes. A little bit more on the other side. You don't want to hold the heat in one place. Like I said, it will burn the wood. You don't have to sand that or scrape that down afterwards. And because you can see that in the final product, you'll see lines if you hold it in one place. So you want to try to kind of move it around while you're heating it up. And just get a good, ow, I touched it. That burnt my panky. Just get a good, even bend there. And it looks much smoother and you can sand it down a lot easier. Because if you do get a bunch of those bend marks and you try to sand them down, you can end up sanding through the sides of the ukulele. And see if actually meant it to be a little bit more aggressive than the actual bend I was looking for. Because that way, what I can do is give myself a little bit of starting playroom here for the bend on this one. And that way, hopefully, it won't try to unbend itself super fast when I start making the bends in the other directions. With a little bit of a line here that I think is going to work itself out as I put these other bends in. But I'm going to let this cool down for just a second to make sure it doesn't try to unbend itself. Turned out pretty well. I don't see any cracks. I didn't feel it crack, so that's very nice. Got the most difficult bend done. And what we're gonna do now is I go to this one next. And I just kind of squirt some water in here, see where that line is, and I'll bend right under there in the opposite direction. This piece of wood is pretty dang stiff. Probably left it a little bit too thick, if I'm being honest might actually let this dry out and then try to thin it out some more before I continue, just so I don't end up cracking it in the end. I'm just gonna straighten it back out. It's pretty straight because I didn't push it too hard. And what I'm gonna do is just sand this part down a little bit to try to keep it from cracking when I bend it further with this. It's the first bend down, I think I'll let that dry overnight before I go and then continue to bend the other side. This one will also be finished bending tomorrow. All I have to do is just kind of go in here, finish this little bend out, and then re-bend part of the top. I didn't let it dry very well, so it kind of popped back up. But after that, I'll be pretty much done. See, push, push this down a little bit, finish that bend, and then bend this in. And then I'll finish this side and you can glue them together. I'll plane the two sides and back down and make the neck, install the tuners, install the frets, install the fretboard, install the strings, play the ukulele. Let's go. What's up? We're back home. I'm back in the shop and we're working on the ukulele again. I got the sides both completely bent up. It took a while. It took a lot of experimenting with the bending and how I got to do it right to, get the, to keep the shape. But it ended up all right-ish. It ended up pretty good. One of the sides had a pretty big crack in it right down where a big bend was, but I glued it up so it should be all right in the end. You shouldn't really be able to see it, and it should sound perfectly normal. But what we're doing now is just putting these little binders right here, gluing them in, and that one's, the one over there, is to help hold the neck of the guitar in when we glue it, and to help hold these pieces together, and this is just to help hold these pieces at the back together. As soon as these get done gluing, we're going to make the binders that go all the way around the tops and bottom of the edges to help hold the glue top and bottom in place. And that should be going all right. We still have the top and bottom that are unplaned right here. And we'll get those planed up. And you see, we'll put the ukulele together. So, let's see how this goes.
Yo, what is up? We're back on this ukulele project. We just got home and worked on a few days. I got a few, I got a few things done. They're pretty important. First thing I did is I finished bending those sides all up, and boom, it's a thing now. And I got two pieces of wood, and I glued to the front and back, so I glued the two sides I bent together. That was the most important thing we did. The body, the sides, and the body, that part's done. Now we have to make all the kerfing, which is this little stuff. I showed you a second ago how, cutting it, how I was cutting it with that little jig, and it's a piece of wood that you made a bunch of cuts in so it can bend, and this is what you glue. This is what you put in here. You glue this to the walls of the ukulele on the inside, so when you glue the top and bottom on, it has something to stick to. I'll have to glue in this one. I'm gluing in that one. I'll have to glue in two more, one in the bottom for each side, and then we'll be done, and we'll be ready to plane down the top, plane down the bottom, attach the neck, the fretboard, and everything, and the tuners, and the strings, and all that good stuff. Howdy doody, it's me. What we've already done, we've planed down the top and the back of the ukulele. The back and the soundboard, the face, all planed down. All good, all nice. And that planer I told you was in the corner of the shop that didn't work, I fixed it, kind of-ish. I got it working good enough to plane down the back and top of the ukulele. It was having a little bit of trouble, but it worked alright-ish, you know? Alright-ish. By that I mean it worked, but it kind of ate this here. That's okay though, because that's just enough that we can still use this piece for the soundboard of the ukulele. All the kerfing has been glued on the inside of the walls of the ukulele, and I glued in a few support pieces to keep the shape from bending out because it wasn't holding its shape very well, but you can't really see those, and they don't shouldn't affect the sound at all. I've sanded down the majority of the walls of the ukulele on the outside just so they look nice and smooth. I did an oopsie right here where I sanded it too much, and you can kind of like oopsies because it went to this little piece of glue on the inside but we're going to paint over that so when they put polyurethane on there you can't see it at all i cut these out of the scraps of the kerfing these will be the tone boards on the back and stem where the ukulele i'm not sure what they do but the internet tells me they need to be there Cut these out of 2x4 and sand them down. These will be the other tone bars that are needed on the walls and soundboard of the ukulele. I think you just glue these all in there. I looked at some templates to use on there. I'll glue them in and I'll glue these on. I'll show you how all these tone boards go in and we'll glue those in. And we'll have to do is glue the top and bottom on and then just sand it down. That's all we have left to do. It's kind of a bit, but it's kind of not. So, let's go. Yo, what's up, folks? Today we're making the neck, the fretboard, and all that good stuff to put on and finish up the ukulele. What we gotta do first is make the neck and the head of the ukulele. The neck and the head are both being made out of the rest of the cypress that I made the soundboard of the ukulele out of. This was a lot bigger until I cut it up into these pieces. These are just a few pieces I made so I can shape up into the neck of the ukulele. And I cut this pretty long and just cut the scraps off of that and glued them onto here so I can sand that down in the shape I want it to be. And this is the head, I just kind of drew it out on a sheet of paper and traced it on and cut it out. We'll be cutting an angle in and gluing this onto there. And then we'll be sanding all this down. I'm planning on gluing some pieces of wood on top of this and sanding them down to inlay those and just kind of make it look real pretty, you know, all that good stuff. The soundboard, not the soundboard, the fretboard of the ukulele will be made at the black walnut. I just had a little piece lying around, so I planed it down. I'm just gonna cut out the frets on the same thing as my soprano at the house. And that should work perfectly. I'll just measure it out and make sure the two uh, bridges are the same distance apart. So the frets should have to be the same distance apart. If I'm not mistaken, it's like 13 and a half inches for the soprano. So that should work out perfectly fine. As soon as we get all that done, we'll hang it up, do a coat of poly on it, sand it down a little bit, and do another coat of poly, and it'll be completely done, and we can put the strings on. <laughs>
That's right, boy. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of time, uh, but we've officially finished this here ukulele. Everything came together super nice. All the pieces of wood fit together super well. I ended up not covering up this mark because I thought painting it would just look a little weird. So I left it like that and you really don't notice it unless you're looking for it. Everything else went off without a hitch. It turned out great. The neck is super pretty with all the stuff in it from the piece of cypress there. The inlay right here on the head turned out great. The strings and everything went on perfectly fine. I did take down the bridge, take off the bridge that I had made and sanded it down because it was way too high. But now it's a little bit too short. And if you can hear this, that string buzzes a little bit on the fret behind it. So I might take the bridge off and either just raise this one or make a new bridge. It was kind of hard to tell in the video, but I did make the bridges out of deer antler that I just cut up and sanded down. So they would be nice, pretty and white and sturdy. They, everything turned out great. It all went together pretty well, pretty easily. The frets weren't too hard to get in. You saw the video of me cutting the lines for the frets in there onto the fretboard, but I had to go back and cut them a little bit deeper as I was installing them because they weren't quite high enough. But other than that, it went off without a hitch, basically. I did glue this in the wrong place the first time and re-glued it. Uh, it was small enough that I could actually get it in the same place without messing up the finish at all, so that was great. This was a few weeks, probably two or three weeks in total that I worked on this off and on. You know, probably one of the lengthier projects I've done. Definitely one of the, my favorites ever. It turned out super well. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make this from boards to here. It was a very lengthy process. I had an enormous amount of fun doing this. I love doing these types of projects, and I plan on doing more of them in the future. If you do want to see those, I think you should definitely subscribe to the channel and stick around, as this will definitely not be the last thing I make on here. I'm not really sure what I want to do next, but I'm sure if you found this interesting, you'll find that interesting as well. So I just really hope you guys want to stick around and see my next project. If you enjoyed this, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for my next project. Bye!